really stressful and uh, it's nothing that uh, most of us enjoy doing. And when you have fish tanks and you have to move your fish in addition to having to move all your belongings, it just adds to the stress. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope everyone's doing well. My name is Enzo and you're watching Tazawa Tanks. Recently a viewer had uh, written me and commented on one of my videos uh, talking about uh, uh, the, kind of the new tank syndrome and when you can add fish to your aquarium and had asked about uh, how he can move his fish from one home to another. He is having to move and uh, has to transport his fish with him obviously and his tank and all the equipment. So I answered his questions, but then I thought that uh, maybe I would film kind of a quick video. I'm sure that there's uh, many more people out there that might uh, not be sure how to move when they have fish and how to take care of their fish and their uh, filtration when they're moving. So I'll talk today a little bit about my experiences of moving, and I've done it many times with fish tanks, uh, more than I uh, care to do, in fact. And um, I've also uh, done it several times for some of my customers because I do have an aquarium service business. So I've moved aquariums for uh, my customers, my clients, from one home to another and had to set it all up before. So I'll talk a little bit about my experiences and what I think is the best practice. So the most important thing that I want to focus on, obviously, is the health of the fish. And that's two things. One, the fish themselves. So I want to make sure that the fish are healthy, the fish are safe, and they are transported in a method that uh, doesn't create a lot of stress on them and uh, is not going to harm them physically. The other part that's really important is the beneficial bacteria. I want to keep the bacteria alive and thriving. That bacteria is in the substrate of your aquarium. It's on rocks and decorations and it is in the filter media. What I do when I move a tank is I make sure that I take care of that beneficial bacteria that is on all of those surfaces, primarily the filters, the substrate, and the rocks and decorations. When I am transporting substrate, I make sure that the substrate is in a bucket. So I'll put it in a bucket kind of like this one, and then I'll make sure that the water from the aquarium is in the bucket and keeping that uh, substrate submerged. Now that can be very heavy, so fortunately for me, I lift a lot of weight, so having a bucket that's weighing 50 or 60 pounds is not that big of a deal. If you're not that strong and you, are, uh, you know, foresee having some issues, put them in smaller containers and kind of spread them out, but make sure that you keep that substrate submerged and because uh, you want the water to be in that substrate and that gravel. You don't want it to get dry or the bacteria will die. The same thing with filters. So when you have filter media, whether it be a sponge filter or the media from a canister filter, you want to make sure that all of that stays wet and submerged in the tank water. That's the only way that the bacteria will stay alive. If it gets dry, they will die. If it's a canister filter, pretty easy. You can just seal it off, uh, make sure that you close the valve and transport that. If it's a short move, if you're moving across town and it's you know, only uh, 10 or 15 miles away, it's not going to be that big of an issue. If it's a longer move, and I've done those before, um, you are going to have some issues with oxygen. So if you are moving a long duration, and I'll tell you my story about how I moved uh, a couple times with one of my tanks, um, you want to make sure that you have oxygen. The oxygen obviously for the fish, but then oxygen also for your bacteria. So. I wouldn't want to transfer um, a canister filter you know, across multiple states and have it sealed off because you're going to have some bacteria die off. So what I would do is I would put them in a bucket and put an air stone in there with a battery powered air pump. You can pick those up for, for just a few dollars on Amazon, you can get them at your local fish store. Most stores will have um, some type of uh, battery operated pump. Just put an air stone in there, put it in uh, the bucket and uh, just make sure that uh, you have some aeration going in that, uh, in that water where your filter media is housed or your substrate is housed. That way you'll be uh, kind of you know, ensured that you have some aeration and that the bacteria won't die off from being starved from oxygen. One of my favorite things to use, and I showed you this bucket already, is the bucket with these uh, gamma lids on them. And uh, the reason why I like the gamma lids is it's a sealed lid. So it's just like a normal bucket that comes with a regular lid. Um, but then you can buy these separate lids and you can get them at Lowe's and Home Depot and a lot of different hardware stores. Um, and they screw on and they have a seal. So um, this portion snaps onto the bucket and then you screw it on. There's a little gasket on there on the bottom. You would screw that on and then it's essentially air and water tight. Now that's great for you know short distances or some situations, but if you do have to have an airline in there, obviously you can't 
um, you know, stick it in the lid because it's going to get pinched off. So then I would drill a small hole in the lid and be able to run your airline tubing through that hole into the bucket. And uh, if you are worried about it splashing, you can put a little bit of silicone in there and let it dry before you transport your fish just to ensure that you don't have a lot of water splashing out. But even if you don't do that, there won't be very much water that's going to come through that tiny little gap between the airline and the hole that you drilled. Now with fish, I use the same bucket. So again, if it's a short trip, if I'm just helping somebody move fish across town and they're only gonna be in the bucket for 45 minutes or so, then I will just put the tank water in the bucket and catch the fish and put them in the bucket. I like using buckets rather than bags when I'm moving fish for short distances because I find that it's a little bit easier on the fish and they have more room to swim around. Obviously there's more water volume. So it's just easier on me as far as catching them and transporting them. I feel that it's easier on the fish. And if there is any situation where when I get to the new home and I have to set up the tank, if there's any kind of delay, if there's an issue, they're in a bucket, I can just drop an air stone in there, I can throw a little sponge filter in there, and they'll be fine and they can survive as long as the temperature is you know, moderate. A couple of times I've had to move long distances with aquariums. Um, if you're familiar with California, California is a very long state and I moved from Northern California down to Southern California and back and uh, I did it both times and this was many many years ago so this was uh, maybe the first time was uh, maybe 15 years ago and then and then about 12 years ago or so so anyway when I did that I, I uh, took with me my favorite tank at that time which was a 55 gallon acrylic tank and I had have all my African cichlids in this tank and uh, so I actually took my tank and everything in it down to Southern California, set it up and then did the same thing when we moved back, brought it, uh, bringing it back to Northern California. What I used at that time is I used an ice chest, not this exact ice chest, it was actually a little bit bigger than this and I had a couple of them and uh, what I did is I um, filled it with the tank water caught all my fish and put them in the ice chests and I ran and then I had a battery powered air pump and I ran I, and I ran airlines with stones into the uh, ice chests so that there was some aeration going on and uh, my fish were fine I basically just kind of taped it all up wrapped it in like some plastic saran wrap put it in the cab of the moving truck with me along with my dog. So I was sitting, driving the truck obviously, and then I had a couple ice chests stationed in the front of the truck and uh, had my dog sitting next to me. So it was kind of fun having to drive maybe about eight hours uh, each direction uh, with your dog and your, and your fish next to you. But all the fish survived, they did just fine, and uh, it was relatively easy to do. Um, and you know the hard part was moving the tank and all the furniture and everything but as far as transporting the fish they did just fine they were fine in the truck and uh, it was during the summertime both times so they weren't uh, stressed out it wasn't too cold if it was cold then I could have put some heaters in there like the heat packs put them in like a little ziploc bag taped it to the lid so that I can keep uh, kind of a, a warmer temperature in there so anyway that's about it just a quick little video talking about how I move fish from one from one home to another uh, number one make sure that you keep your your uh, bacteria alive by keeping the substrate wet by keeping your decorations wet if you can and uh, most importantly keeping your filter media wet and submerged and aerated if it's going to be a long time secondly try to transport your fish without uh, putting too much stress on them you can pick up these buckets uh, pretty much anywhere. They're really inexpensive. Those lids are not that expensive. Just make sure that when you do get a bucket that you get a bucket that is only for fish. Don't use an old paint bucket. Don't use an old pastry bucket that you got from the bakery. Use one that's brand new. Wash it out with some hot water, no soap. Let it dry and uh, just make sure that you don't put anything else in that bucket. One of the things that I do is I mark my buckets. So you may notice that uh, it's a little faded off now, but all of my buckets that I use for fish, they all say fish only, and even on the lid. So I've got buckets all over, all over here. I'm in, in the other room, I have buckets, and they're only for fish. I do have other buckets that I use for washing cars and things like that, and those will say car only as an example. So I do not use any of my buckets other than for fish if they're for fish. That's all I have for now. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.